We're continuing our discussion with the analysis of one categorical variable, but today we're going to focus on the idea of inferential statistics. So we'll look at it from a broad perspective and then try to boil it down into what it would be for one categorical variable. So to start out, let's look at the generic definition for statistical inference. So you re may remember from past lectures that we defined statistical inference as using data from a sample to draw conclusions about a population. And one thing that's the most important when you're using a sample is to make sure that it's an accurate representation of a population because there are no statistical techniques that are capable of fixing a poor sample. Now if we were to talk about it in terms of one categorical variable, we will, we will want to use a sample proportion to draw a conclusion about a population proportion. So our sample proportion will be represented by the statistic p hat, and we're hoping to use information from that to draw a conclusion about our population proportion, which is our parameter of interest, which we denote with p. Now there are two main types of statistical inference, either hypothesis testing or confidence intervals. So today we're discussing confidence intervals where you create an area you hope the population parameter will be contained within, whereas a hypothesis test will ask a specific question about a population parameter. So here again, in the context of one categorical variable, a hypothesis test would ask a question about P, and our confidence interval will create an area we hope P is contained within. Now remember, we've discussed why it's okay to use a sample to talk about a population, and we discussed that when we were looking at sampling distributions of p hat, or in other words, the sample proportion. And we learned three different facts connected to the sampling distribution of p hat. We learned where it centers itself, or the mean. We also learned that it can get to that normal distribution if n times p and n times 1 minus p are both greater than 10. And then we also learned how to measure variability. And we discussed how there was variability because different samples may result in different values of p hat. Now before we actually look at making a statistical inference, I want to remind you of some of the steps or maybe even introduce some of the steps that are necessary when you're performing research. So the very first thing that you want to do when you determine your research question is to ask yourself, what is the population of interest? So it's very important to be specific as to what your population is, because if you don't define it clearly, you might not be presenting information in a way that people understand. For example, if I were to define the Grand Valley State University student body as all current graduate and undergraduate students, but another person doing research was defining the GBSU student body as simply undergraduate students, any information that we got wouldn't match because I would be including a group of people that they did not in their population. So it's very important to clearly identify your population of interest. The second step when you're conducting research is to make sure that you, after asking your research question, know statistically how you will answer that. So make your research question into a statistical question. This might seem to be out of order, but it's important for you to make sure that you, before you collect data, know your statistical question so you know what type of data to collect. So then you would go through the process of collecting sample data. You would next summarize it into graphical or numeric summaries. And remember, we refer to that as descriptive statistics. And then finally, you'll be able to combine the knowledge of the sampling distribution and the information you found from the sample to make conclusions about your parameter of interest. Now, after you go through all of that, those conclusions about your parameter of interest are going to be your form of statistical inference. And ultimately, we want to do two forms of statistical inference, but we're going to start with confidence intervals. So confidence intervals can be shortened to just CI, and we expect to create an interval that the population parameter will fall within based on a certain level or uh, 
specified level of certainty called the confidence level. Now generically, the formula for a confidence interval is used as a statistic plus or minus a margin of error, where the margin of error is a multiplier times standard error. And in our next couple of videos, we will see actual formulas for the analysis of one categorical variable, and then also some examples of this.